I just wanted to make one last video explaining all these still photographs. Um, you probably know by now that this one here was the one that uh, seemed to get ruined after two or three casts. Uh, because of the white color of it, it tends to get washed out with the video, so it's hard to see detail on it. But this is number one. I mean, the one with one additional tablespoon of porcelain powder added to it. It held, held up very good. I mean, really, really good. Uh, these numbers that you're seeing here, 0 0.173, that's the depth of the face of the mold down to the deepest part. That's how deep it is. You know, multiply that times two, and you get the the overall diameter in, in that particular... Uh, you know from front to back from side to side on the seam line it's wider okay the same thing across the board and here's what I wanted you to notice I measured all of these for the same thing and they all measured a little bit more a little bit less but by ten thousandths you know I mean that's more accuracy than I'll ever need for my typical projects but on this particular project I just needed to wring all the accuracy I could out of it and uh, to me uh, being off in the ten thousandths measurement wise is is pretty damn good okay um it's just that in this particular project i just needed all the accuracy i could get this one here was the one that had two uh three additional scoops of porcelain powder and uh the reason it looks like it d it does is i i manually flattened out the surfaces to see if i could get them to mate perfectly flush with each other to mitigate the erosion that i got on the very edges of the mold cavities. Um, those who are mold, uh, bullet mold makers or casters, bullet casters, I should say, uh, if, if you feel the inside edge of the metal molds that you're working with, they're like razor sharp, okay? These may start out razor sharp, but if the faces are not flat against each other, the heat of the molten lead is just gonna erode that razor edge. And that's exactly what happened uh, in this case. Um, also wanted to show you this. These, I hope you can see. Oh wait, these are the good ones. These, uh, they look like crap, and actually they are they are duds. Um, they'll be going back into the melting pot, even when casting with my metal molds, aluminum and iron molds. I still get duds. You know, it's that's not making excuses for the crap that this looks like. Uh, these are crap. Uh, but it's not a big deal to me because I just throw them back into the melting pot, remelt them, and make more bullets. Uh, that's the good thing about bullet casting. Um, unfortunately, I can't do the same with the molds themselves. I can't throw them back into some melting pot and and rework them. So I got to print new molds. Um, on these here, these are the finished mold. These were the good bullets. If you look at the seams, what I did on these is I took a razor blade and I manually cleaned up the seams on them. Just to make them presentable, because if I would show them, show these to you, the way I just showed you these, uh, it's easy to get the impression that this is a bunch of shit. I mean, it's not even worth the effort. It is worth the effort to me, and uh, this this is the outcome. Okay, these are really smooth surfaces, uh, with the exception of where I uh, took a razor blade and and removed the flashing that was on them. Uh, what makes them look uneven? is the, the frosty effect that uh, the bullets came out of the mold as. Also on this one, I wanna show you something. Um, I've marked these uh, red and blue lines to denote the, the seam line as blue and uh, the, the opposite non-seam line is red. And I just marked them that way so I could show you on camera as I measured these. Um, what I'm working with, okay? Red is a non-seam line. These are the dimensions I'm getting across the board on this particular uh, dimension on all the bullets that I'm able to measure, okay? They all fall within that. You know, they could be a thousand, ten thousand more, ten thousand less. On the seam line, they measure, you know, I got a high spot on that. That's no way, that's 357.5. Okay, yeah, it measures closer to 354, 355, you know, 0.355, the 3 to 0.345, okay. And uh, although that seems bad, and, and actually it is bad if you're wanting bullets right off, good usable bullets right off the bat, but 
Uh, what's good about that is that uh, I can, I now have a, a more exact number to use to compensate for these uh, dimensional discrepancies. What I mean is um, I can, in my CAD software, I can make the CAD model oblong, okay, in the dimensions that need to be made. And so that when I print it out and when I cast them, they come out in the actual dimensions that they're supposed to be, which is a, a perfectly round uh, 0.358 of an inch in diameter. From there, I can size it down with my sizing dies. These here, um, they were, they measured same thing, one, 0.173. They measured that deep from the face to the deepest part of the cavity. Okay, what I did is I sanded them down. Ah, oh, shit, this white just gets washed out so easily. I sanded them down so where I was uh, down to 0.171 to get a razor edge on the inside edges of this. And uh, I think that would have worked if these were newly uh, newly cured, newly out of the printer mold halves. But uh, I uh, they had been eroded on the edges already, so I was only able to go down to 0.171. And uh, that tightened up the seams incredibly, but because it had been eroded so far down, that, that that's as far as I wanted to go. I just wanted to check and see if I could actually manually sand these down to a perfectly flat surface and uh, and mate them together and have a seam seam that was so tight that the lead molten lead would not be able to uh, damage them or yellow them like they did on uh, on these trial prototype molds um, yeah that's it man uh, I just wanted to show you that up close to see what I'm working with uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask.